Hey there, Matt Wicks here from SSW. Here in the studio at NDC Sydney, I'm here with Justin Yu from Microsoft, and we're talking about uh, deploying uh, resources to Azure and deploying your applications all with the Azure Developer CLI. Justin, how are you going? Hello, nice to meet you. Um, it's good to be here. Yeah, so um, we've got. We're going to be talking about the Azure Developer CLI. That's right. We've already got an Azure CLI. Mm -hmm. um, why? Why do we need two? That's a really good question. And the, one of um, the pain points using the Azure, Azure CLI is that we can you know, the provision the resources through Azure CLI using like Azure Bicep or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then we need to deploy applications uh, after, only after that, after using the Azure CLI. But you know, there, there, is a bit, uh, there is a gap between the provisioning process and the deployment process. So it's kind of... Um, less seamless than we expected. So using this uh, as a de uh, developer CLI, then we probably um, can uh, fill the gap. So we don't have to worry about provisioning and we don't have to worry about deployment. We just uh, doing it just one arm the command. Um, yeah. How does the developer CLI uh, actually deploy the application? Yep. So we have um, the actual we have a code uh, we have a code um, the on the GitHub repository mm -hmm. and then we have uh, the bicep file in within the repository as well. So it has um, the we all are ready for provisioning and deployment. So um, as a de uh, developer CLI actually has um, the location where the bicep file is located and where the source code and the application uh, source for the application is located. So we just um, the um, they let the Azure de developer CLI know where they are. Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, it does everything behind the scene for us. So, if let's uh, let's think, think about this. You have a new hire, for example. Yep. You have a new hire, and uh, you are new to this project, and you have no idea what's going on here. Then, oh, probably um, one of the project lead um, probably ask you to read this read me document, and then you will be able to set up all the environment you need. Okay, then what will happen? Ah, oh, how can I set up this the resources um, to Azure? Uh, you need to do this and this and this, mm -hmm. and oh, I have no idea what to do. Then okay, instead of doing that, just uh, type azd up, and that's it. And that's We're it. Done. That's right. Just so like usually when I when I set up the projects, I've got PowerShell scripts that mm -hmm. go and run mm -hmm. everything and yep. deploy stuff and. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't need to do that anymore. It'll just be, hey, there's a README document mm -hmm. to get the co code running, mm -hmm. AZD up. That's right. Uh, it sounds like black magic. Yeah, <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so this is uh, my um, the GitHub code space uh, here. And this is using my uh, the GitHub repository. I will show um, this uh, the GitHub repository later. And then we have no resource group yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create here, then use uh, a azd in it. Then it will ask me to um, set up the environment name. So I will use um, maps and dc. Then it will create um, it will create the environment, which is um, the the name of the resource group, and the, all the resources under the resource group will use this um, the environment name, which is the ndc. So I'm going to choose Australia East because we are in Sydney now. Then um, I will choose my subscription name. Then it will set up like that. And all you can see here is that Azure uh, in the uh, directory and which is not part of our repository any longer. And when we see that there is um, the pre-configured setup which is done by Azure init. So which is called, um, the, we are going to use Maps NDC, we are going to uh, deploy the applications on as Australia East, and then using my subscription ID, using my, um, the, uh, as, as, as a login ID. Mm -hmm. And also uh, we have Azure.yaml file, which is um, what is going to do. So on the first one is infrastructure. We are going to use Bicep file, for the uh, within the infrastructure infra directory mm -hmm. and for using the main.bicep file. And for, once it's done, and we will deploy as a function app uh, on the, uh, the source code within this uh, directory and using like, which is the .NET, and then we are going to use uh, this function application name. So okay. that's all it. 
So if I, then we the initiated all the, um, as a developer CLI environment. Yep. So after that, AZD, then up, oh, and that's it. And then it will do create um, the all the resources on Tazo well, using this bicep file, mm -hmm. using this bicep file. And once it's done, it will deploy the function as a function application using this source code to that bytes uh, on the as well. So it takes time. Uh, it depend uh, depending on your how complex your bicep file and depending on how depending on how big your as a function application. And it takes time around like um, the within a minute to like um, 10 minutes or something like that. So let's wait until it's done. Sure. While we're waiting, we'll just. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I just want to pick your brain on this. Sure. So when you initialized um, AZD, mm -hmm. you told it subscription IDs and resource names and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it put it in a directory that's being Git ignored. So mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. only for you. Yes, um, that's only other, for me. Other developers won't get it, so mm -hmm. you won't get any conflicts. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool because we don't want to leak the subscription IDs. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you're saying ACD up, it's mm -hmm. then referencing those settings to make sure it goes into the right place That's for correct. you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to here, the other portal. So because we don't have any um, the NDC stuff here, and when we refresh on the page, and we will be able to see the resource group. And if we click that, and it's um, the now being deployed. Mm -hmm. And um, because the our the the the, <clears throat> the bicep file has a uh, bunch of other um, the resources such as uh, API management and mm -hmm. the function app. It's and, gonna take a yeah, while. It takes it takes yeah. time. And also um, I want to uh, yeah call out this one. So we have um, the function app resource on the, the source directory. So it's a it, we are using uh, some conventions. So uh, the bicep file is always uh, stored under the infra directory. Yep. And we are uh, and um, this is a convention that uh, all the source code uh, goes under the SRC directory. Yeah, those, those mm. are the conventions we we follow nowadays anyway. Yeah, and you know, the, we com completed all the resource provisioning now. Yeah. Then, now we are deploying the application. So it takes soon, it takes about, and so now it's building, yeah, it's, it's done. done. Six minutes. Yeah, six minutes. So. But the next time you run it, it's, it's uh, you don't have to deploy any new resources, no. so it'll be even faster. I think so. And when we refresh um, the resource group, and then everything is done. So when we go into the function app side, and you know, these uh, all we need to check is um, whether the function endpoint has been deployed or not. Then we will be able to see the all the function app endpoint, so cool. which is working fine. That's it. And um, this uh, function app application, oops, this function app application also shows um, the, uh, has um, the integrated with the um, Swagger UI. So I will show you the Swagger UI. So let's check the whether function app is working fine. That's perfectly working fine. Yeah, so yeah, all we need to do is just type azd up and wait for six minutes. Then yeah, all the um, resources are provisioned and application is deployed. And you can do this with existing code. It just need there's a couple of conventions you need to follow. Yeah. But if you currently have your bicep, mm -hmm. you can add this in no problem. That's right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And then once you complete the, this kind of practice and you don't need to um, use all the resources any longer, then simply type azd down. And then it will destroy all the resources you just created. So if it will ask me to, um, are you really sure? Uh, so it will ask me like that. So That's it'll okay. see what needs to be deleted yeah. and then. Mm. So are you sure? So I will do, yes. Then it will completely uh, de destroy all the resources. And no bill shock. No. That's awesome. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about, ah, I need to pay extra bills, you know, because um, sometimes if you have a lot of resources to, uh, to provision and then and forget, and Sometimes you will, oh, oh, I got a build shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've, yeah, deploy a Kubernetes cluster and you forget about it. You, <laughs> you find out pretty quickly. That's right. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. No problem. Thanks, Justin, for sharing um, all this information about the Azure Developer CLI. Uh, my name is Matthew Wicks here in the studio at NDC Sydney. Thanks for watching. Thank you.